This episode of the Stardom Cast is sponsored by Puro TV, your one-stop shop for all your Puro DVD needs. From Stardom to New Japan, from All Japan to Ice Ribbon, as well as incredible box sets documenting the best matches of your favorite Japanese wrestling icons, Puro TV has it covered with new items added every week. And now, as a special gift to listeners of the Stardom Cast, Puro TV are offering 10% off. Simply go to puro-tv.com, use the promo code STARDOMCAST at checkout and get 10% off your entire order. Once again, that's the code STARDOMCAST to receive 10% off your entire order. The link to their website is in the podcast description. And now, on with the episode. Hey, this is Kevin Kelly. Get ready for the latest episode of the Stardomcast. guys and welcome to the stardom cast your weekly audio source of all things world wonder ring stardom i'm your host rob good and i am joined as ever by mr positivity himself matt turner matt how are you good sir i am phenomenal as always mr rob goodwin and i'm gearing up for a busy handful of days here coming up but a good busy I hope you're doing well, sir. I hope everybody out there in the podcast world is doing well as well as well, I guess. Well as well. Good as well. <laughs> Good as well. I mean, this isn't the first time this week we've spoken. We had uh, an interesting attempt at recording the alternate commentary yesterday, didn't we? It was, uh, yeah, we'd just been talking off air. It was perhaps one of the most non-productive podcasts we've ever done. Yeah, well, I probably jumped on the... We were probably on the thing just for... We always do our usual, uh, you know, before we hit the record talk, see how see how we're all doing and how's everybody doing. Not that we don't text each other uh, every single day, but uh, by the time we uh, I got on the air and got off the air, I think it was about an hour and change, and we all we did was able to record the uh, the intro for the Shiri vs. Utami uh, Dream Queendom alternate commentary as Rob was having an issue with his internet. So we were just discussing a few minutes ago. Tomorrow... Friday. It's literally going to be as soon as I come home from work. We're going to record the alternate commentary, and as soon as we hang up, I'm getting in the car as Lily's spending the weekend over to her mom's, and she's uh, she doesn't Lily doesn't drive yet, so we have to meet like halfway. So it's going to be uh, for the moment my feet hit the ground tomorrow morning until maybe about uh, seven o'clock. I'm going to be rocking and rolling, but uh, hey, man, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, we're able to record the Sherry versus Utami Utami alternate commentary uh, tomorrow. Yeah, if you are listening to this and Monday's come around and it hasn't happened, just assume that I am in a puddle of my own tears somewhere because uh, it might have been the most stressed I've ever been recording a podcast. Um, But yeah, I mean, it's been an interesting week in uh, the world of Stardom. One huge piece of news, which uh, we'll be talking about in quite a lot of detail. Um, That being, of course, Himika's imminent retirement. We'll talk about that very, very surely. But before we do that, Matt, we've already mentioned the Patreon. But uh, what's going on on the Patreon right now? What's going on on the Patreon? We just released a Zoomy versus Starlight Kid rivalry review. It's the first one I've done of this kind. Um, I've gotten some pretty decent feedback. I really enjoy doing it. So that just went up uh, a day or two ago. At the uh, end of this month, uh, we'll be releasing. And everybody, please pray and have pity for me because I have to watch all these Io Shirai versus Kyrie Hojo matches. <laughs> and boy, what a chore it is. I say sarcastic. Oh, my God, I'm having so much fun watching these matches uh at the end of the month i will be releasing the eo versus Kyrie rivalry review and what i did too as well is because they've only had a handful of one-on-one matches and i've actually mentioned this on the podcast that we tried to record yesterday is i did uh, eo versus Kyrie versus bianca belair versus Shayna baser from uh, nxt new york from wrestlemania weekend mm-hmm. a, a few years ago so i added that in as well 
absolutely. I was, and I, I mentioned on the podcast, I was at that show and don't remember that match at all. <laughs> I went back and watched and EO and Kyrie absolutely stole the show. Obviously it's before Bianca Belair uh, blew up to be the star that she is now. And I would love to see a Bianca versus Kyrie or a Bianca versus EO match proper. I'm considering the fact they're both on, on Monday night Raw. Maybe we'll see that where they get 10, 12 minutes, but regardless. Um, so as a bonus, I'm going, I reviewed that match as well. Uh, the and uh, Monday this past Monday, EO versus Kyrie from um, Stardom the Highest 2017, their final singles match uh, that was caught on film that uh, they've ever had. And uh, boy, that was probably not probably. I'm going to say go on record saying that's my favorite EO versus Kyrie match. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, Mr. Rob Goodwin, Sherry versus Utami, Jim Queenum commentary will be up on Monday. If it's not up on Monday, folks, you know why. It's because we're just having technical difficulties. So we'll we'll get it up to you Monday, Tuesday, sometime before the end of the year. Uh, we promise <laughs> you we will have that, uh, that match. Uh, and then at the end of the month, we're going to be doing the final match of the rivalry series is going to be Mayu uh, Iwatani versus Momo Watanabe. So, and that's one that you get to pick there, sir. So, um, you know, you have until next week. You haven't given you seven days, buddy, seven days homework. So. Uh, next week on the podcast, you can tell all the fantastic listeners and Patreons of the uh, Stardom cast which Mayu versus Momo match we're going to watch. Absolutely. It's a tough job, but someone has to do it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and just while, Unbelievable. Absolutely. <laughs> and just while we're on the subject of our Patreon, uh, just a shout out to our latest patrons, Michael Ray and Andrew Finley. Again, some really, really good positive feedback on the Patreon page. And uh, we thank all of our patrons again. I absolutely promise that we will do absolutely everything in our power to get this podcast up on Monday. But if we don't, it is my terrible internet, which is, it's it's frustrating for a couple of things. Yes, I'm going to go into this. It was It's frustrating for a couple of reasons. One, because we pay a lot of money for our internet, so it should be a lot better than it is. And uh, we live on a relatively new housing estate and uh, then got told that even though it's a relatively new housing estate that it's something of a internet black hole and i was like well what why did nobody this check a, this um so yes this is the 1980 anymore you know what i mean I don't, exactly i don't understand when we first started doing these podcasts the internet would go out I'm like oh man rob's gonna kill me he's gonna fire me because i literally live in the middle of nowhere and my internet's terrible and you're like no it's it's my internet and i'm like okay i know i don't feel as bad <laughs> oh no my mine is dreadful when my parents have better internet than me and i'm pretty sure you have to shovel coal into my parents internet to make it work <laughs> um, <laughs> like it's it my my dad is a very he's a he's a stickler in his ways is a uh, big papa goodwin and uh he will not shift internet even though we have to uh limit the amount of devices that are on it anyway that's that's by the by uh, my internet woes. Let's talk about obviously the big thing that came out of Stardom this week, and that is Himika's surprise retirement. So there was a press conference called on, I believe, the 10th of February. Uh, Himika and Rossi Ogawa, and Himika, as I mentioned, announced her retirement. The We Are Stardom Twitter account put out this tweet. Uh, Himika says, I will retire from wrestling. In May, five years into my career, I'm 25 years old. I have no regrets about this. Only a few shows left. I will be big, strong, and cute. I will run through to the end in my own way until the very end. Please support me until the very end. Um, And then we got a little bit more uh, in terms of details of what is going to happen for Himika between now and May, because we've still got... Um, three months until she retires, or two and a half. Um, And we got something of a wish list, which I thought was quite cool. Um, Before she retires, again, according to the We Are Stardom Twitter account, uh, before she retires, Himika wishes for a singles match versus Micah for her retirement match on April 23rd. So the show at the Yokohama Arena will have a singles match between Himika and Micah, and that will be Himika's last match. Uh, She also wants a hardcore match with Risa Sarah at Stardom in Showcase 4 on February 26th. Um, She also wants a match with Kakaru Sakaguchi, I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, who she wrestled with in Act Res Girls, and also said she wanted a special singles match with Chihiro Hashimoto. Um, Just as a side to that um, announced for the Triangle Derby final, which of course is going to be at Yoyagi National Stadium, uh, second stadium, sorry, um, in 
Yo Yogi on the third of on the fourth of March. Um, we have got that Himika versus Chihiro Hashimoto match, um, and then finally we have got um, a couple of dates. Obviously, she will retire. Her last match will be the twenty third of April at Yokohama Arena, that aforementioned match against Micah, and then we have got a retirement ceremony at Corrigan Hall on the fourteenth of May. Um, a lot of conflicting emotions about this match, obviously. Himika, an incredible wrestler, um, really coming into her own in the last 18 months. We were singing the praises of her on uh, last week's podcast and saying how her and Micah need a, an extended run with the tag belts and how we could see them being rivals and, you know, potentially winning white belts and red belts and the like. And literally the next day, she's uh, announced that she's retiring from wrestling. Now, from what I am led to believe, um, thanks to the people on Twitter who do fantastic work with the translations. Um, uh, there's no injury involved. Um, it's just a case of she got into wrestling when she was 20. She had in the back of her mind that after five years, she was going to come out of wrestling and do other things. Um, and she mentioned that I'm not ma- I'm not injured, but I also don't want to end up with a huge backlog of injuries. And, you know, we've said before, that a wrestler's well-being and their happiness has to be paramount. You know, obviously we want Himika to be nothing but happy and successful. I'd love to see her wrestle for another five, ten years, see her win everything, become a Grand Slam champion. But if she doesn't want that and if, you know, this is all part of her goal, then I am I'm happy for her, Matt. Yeah, uh, Dana White from the UFC would always say when a fighter is thinking about retiring, they need to retire. So when you're thinking about, you know, retiring from wrestling, it, it's 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 your time to get out. Doesn't matter if you're in one year, five years, ten years, twenty, twenty five years. When you're ready to go, that's your decision, uh, and we all need to uh, to respect that because if your heart's not in it, and I'm not saying Himika's heart's not in it, I'm excited for this basically final tour that she, that she's given us, and she doesn't owe that to to anybody. The fact that's I think that's just a you know a tip of the hat to to the fans of Stardom and the fans of hers that she's given us all these uh, all these matches on the way out the door. But uh, yeah, if your heart's not in it, you not only can you injure yourself, but you might injure your opponent, you know, because you're picking them off, especially with her style of offense with the lariats and the JP coaster and the, the suplexes and uh, the power bomb and whatnot. So, you know, that's uh, it, it's not only her safety, it's a safety for the fellow workers that are in the ring, but I'm kind of glad I found out about this the way that I did. I was, I was at the gym, I was on the treadmill and I was looking down at my phone and I got a, uh, a DM from uh, our good friend, Mr. Darren Chatton. And he uh, basically laid everything out of what happened was said at the press conference. And the reason why I'm saying that I'm glad I found out that way is because when I got off the treadmill to text you uh, about it, which you said you just found out, is that if I would have went on the main Twitter page, I probably would have had a mini heart attack. Because when I went on my main Twitter feed, it was all Himika broken heart. Hashtag thank you, Himika. And just the, the, being the dad in me and the way that I was raised is like you always prepare yourself for the worst. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God. Like I would have thought like, hey, you know, I don't want to say it, but something – terrible would have happened so i'm glad so thanks for thanks Darren, for shop softening the blow <laughs> but uh the fact that she you know she basically laid out what what she's gonna do for the last you know two and a half months uh first of all let's just enjoy you know the entire career that she gave us especially over these last two or three years in stardom and then let's just enjoy these last two two and a half months you know we're getting a hashimoto match we're getting her final match i can't think of a better person to go out with than her tag partner in micah and you know yeah you're right we talked about it last week on the show it's like they got a problem with Mike and Himika because literally everything that they've done with the two of them, they've turned up gold. And it's outside of them winning one of the two main belts. What are you going to do with them? And I even made mention, I said, they even decided, hey, you know, on the one of the biggest shows of the year, you guys are going to wrestle each other. Good luck. And then they knocked it out of the park. So the fact that on that big Yokohama show, we're getting Micah versus Himika and more than likely Shiri versus Hashimoto. It's like, oh boy. Like those are two just phenomenal matches to start with. And we don't even know what the mercedes Monet match is going to be, you know, what the Mayu match is going to be, what the red belt match is going to be, the white belt match, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that card is already shaping up to be something super special. Like I said, uh, Rob, no no wrestler owes anything to anybody, but the fact that she's given us this is great. And uh, what I would like to see, again, this may be me being a little bit selfish, um, and again, she doesn't owe this to me at all. I would love to see one more My Hemi Point match 
um, just, you know, have her. I love the three of them uh, as a combination. One of my favorite artists of Stardom Champions in recent memory. And I think for her final tag match uh, with, because uh, I think we, I, I would be nice if they build to one final tag match with her and uh, Micah. Mm. I would like for them to see them wrestle the tag team that beat them for the World of Stardom Championships. And I know you know who I'm thinking about, Rob, but if you don't know, you can order the book, Living the Dream, <laughs> Stardom's 10th Anniversary Reel by Rob Goodwin, and it's in there. I would love for their final tag match to be up against uh, the AL- ALK sisters versus uh, Julia and Sherry. I think that would be a really, really nice way to uh, end that tag team. I think you could quite easily main events Corican with that. Um, Micah and Himmiger versus ALK. I think that would be a fantastic way. Um, you know, obviously we, you know, we're a wrestling podcast, we're a stardom podcast. We'd love to see Himika sort of stick around, continue to wrestle. But you know, she's got other she's got other priorities and you know, you said it, Matt. I mean, wrestling is all consuming and if you're if you know that in the back of your mind you're like, oh, I don't know whether I want to carry on doing this, then she owes nothing to anyone. Um and obviously, you know, there is more to life than wrestling. You know, there's starting a family. Obviously, the personal lives of stardom wrestlers are kept fairly low key and fairly private. So obviously, I don't know where that is in terms of uh, in terms of Himika. But you know, if she wants to start a family, then you know, why not? Why not now? And this is actually something that uh, I found out afterwards um, at eleven underscore king underscore junior. Um, uh, Again, this I'm taking this as news. I don't know if this is uh, if this is true or not, but they've put the not only is Himika, who is 25, put a five year limit on her wrestling career, but Miyu Amasaki, who is currently 20 years old, also has done the same thing and says she wants to be retired at age 25. So it seems to be somewhat of a plan, um, and yeah, I. I don't really know what else to add to that. Um, uh, it definitely took me by surprise. Um, yeah, but everybody. Yeah, I mean, again, it's heartbreaking. Um, she's unfortunately definitely not winning the Cinderella now. Um, but, you know, again, all our good thoughts and uh, good luck in everything that you do after wrestling Himika, and hopefully we see you again soon. Um, uh, I'm sure we'll talk more and more over the uh, over the coming months about Himika and how her retirement tour is going as she uh, as she tries to be something like Keiji Muto and uh, stretch out this <laughs> retirement tour. Um, retirement as with la- my last DDM ten man tag, my last my Himmy Boy match, oh my, my last God. match using the clothesline. Uh, I'll tell you what, he's drawn money. But uh, uh, before I forget, we have had um, a whole bunch of people that have asked me, are we going to be doing like some sort of tribute special thing to uh, Himika either on the free show or the Patreon? And uh, I text Rob. I said, what do you what do you think? <laughs> One word, absolutely. So. Sometime maybe May, June, July, we're going to do like some sort of, uh, you know, maybe a couple of uh, alternate commentary matches or a career retrospective. So we haven't figured that out just yet. But yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to be paying tribute to uh, Himika on this podcast. I think that's the only right thing to do. And the final thing, obviously, she said she leaves with no regrets. And I think that's hugely important. You don't want to leave something on the table. If you've completed everything you want to complete, there's no need to stick around. You know, if you, she said she's perfectly happy with, you know, not having one singles gold in stardom. She's happy being a challenger. Um, and I have huge respect for her for that. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll round that off, I think. And again, like I mentioned before, we'll certainly be talking about my, you know, by him, about Himika even, um, both on the free feed and on the Patreon feed over the next couple of months. Um, looking back then at the Supreme fight, one Mr. Dave Meltzer did give his star ratings for the matches or the main matches on the card. And those were thus Chihiro Hashimoto versus Mirai got four stars. Um, the Goddess of Stardom Championships, Mai Himi versus uh, Seven Up got four and a half. Uh, Saika Matani versus Momo Watanabe got three and a half. Um, and Julia and Suzu Suzuki got four and a quarter. Um, I know that you are, 
you were quite a distance apart from Dave with the the wonder of starting championship match, and I'm sure we'll talk about that in a second. But other than that, are you? Do you think? Yeah, roundabout right for those matches. That's about right. I thought the uh, Suzu Suzuki versus Julie match should have been a little bit higher, but uh, other than that, I think that's just about right. And that just that I didn't know that Dave reviewed those matches. Uh, I did not know. So that just goes to show the most prolific writer in all of professional wrestling today and history is watching a lot more Stardom. So uh, that just shows that it's, it's Stardom is definitely getting uh, Big Dave's attention. Mm, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, go on, have what? What is your opinion on? Uh, the semi-main only getting three and a half. And again, let's just preface this by saying wrestling is completely subjective. You know, not everyone likes coffee, okay? But that doesn't make coffee a bad thing, okay? Just because Dave has given it three and a half, which is still a decent grade, and Matt gave it, I think you gave it the full five stars, actually, Matt, didn't you? Unless I'm very much mistaken. Um, nope, you're right. Yep, five stars. So, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure and all that wrestling subjective which is one of the things that makes it so fantastic but i'm intrigued to know matt what your opinion is on that i don't i respect dave i'm a big fan of the wrestling observer if it wasn't for dave Meltzer, i would have not have fallen in love so fast so hard with uh, japanese wrestling because once i started getting a uh, tape trading in like 96 97 and then you would just you would hear about these star ratings i'm like why is this kobashi and misawa and this hashimoto getting way more stars than my favorite wrestlers, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. So, you know, I owe Dave a lot towards, uh, you know, what he's done for, for Japanese wrestling. But so it's just like, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's his star rating. Uh, and I, the fact that we pretty much borrow it um, when we do our star ratings and our, our star ratings, you know, it, it, it is what it is. You can agree or disagree, but I absolutely loved watching that Momo Saya match. And it doesn't matter if it's you, Dave Meltzer, my wife, my cats, uh, anybody other else says I didn't like that match. Um, there's a lot of people that agree with me. I, I said before that uh, as soon as the match, as soon as the show was over, and I was putting stuff out on Twitter, you know what I what I liked, what I really liked, and certain things that I I don't think I disliked anything on the show other than the bright ru- roulette wheel uh, that scared my cat at one thirty in the morning. But anywho, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean I I I mean it's a surprise to no one if you have listened to this podcast before. I just I like everything more than just about anybody. I, I just really enjoy. Just the fruits that are life. I just just enjoy, especially in wrestling, because I understand a little bit better than most, like the sacrifice on the bodies that uh, wrestling takes. And by no means am I saying am I any as good as Saya Kamatani or Momo Watanabe or anybody. Not on my best day and their worst day would I even be as half as good as any of them. So I I kind of appreciate it like a little bit more. If maybe that's the the way that I, I'm going. Not that I'm saying Dave or you or nobody else doesn't appreciate it. I'm just saying that. I may just understand things maybe a little bit more and appreciate the physical and mental toll that wrestling takes. And that's why a lot of stuff, maybe I just graded on a curve, but um, plus I'm just a huge fan of Sonia Kamatani and Momo Watanabe. And I thought the match was great. I thought the spots they did were great. I love the ending, how Momo kept trying to, he, she kept hitting the, uh, the peach sunrise, uh, the heel sunrise, excuse me. And then trying to get into the, uh, the peach thunder. I know she was hitting the peach, uh, peach sunrise as well, but eventually Sai hits her with the peach sunrise. And then she holds on and, Rolls into a tornado, uh, uh, a key crusher, um, what star crusher, excuse me. And then the 450 splash, I thought that was like the perfect ending. How uh, Saya was trying to avoid the, the Peach Thunder the entire match and then turned it around and hit Momo with her one of her big moves, who's her former mentor. And I thought that's what really just dialed it up like an extra half star for me. But uh, that's why I liked it. You can agree with me, disagree. I've watched the match uh, three times now and I enjoyed each and every time. So, uh, Please, nobody, you know, sour my cherries on my Sunday because I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And if you liked it, it was, if you liked it like I did, great. If not, no big deal. I'll still buy you a beer or a Yoo-Hoo or whatever you want, you know? Don't sour my cherries. I don't think I've ever heard that before, but sure. Okay, Matt. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to steal it. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so just another look few couple of bits of news um before we head into these two shows that we're going to look at um tomoka inaba's sister is making her uh wrestling debut at the just half out show on march 3rd at corrigan hall um azusa inaba will be facing her sister tomoka inaba so uh hopefully um if she is half as good as uh, Tomoka t- has turned out to be, then we are in for a treat. Um, I'm very excited to see what happens there. Um, and then finally, it's been announced, announced sorry, that two shows, the 23rd 
of February in Nagano and the 25th in Wakayama are both cheering shows for stardom. So uh, we are getting back to some semblance of normality. I know that New Japan released their dates for the New Japan Cup and a significant portion of those are cheering shows. So again, we finally seem to be leaving COVID and clap crowds and things slowly but surely in the rearview mirror, which is uh, which is a positive map. Yeah, it's crazy. That it's been like three years, and you would see it like go up, go down, go up, go down. Even in our area, you know, going up and going down, you can't go in here. And even uh, even there's still a lot of places that still wear masks. There's still, you know, with my job, I'm in quite a, a bunch of stores, and there's still store owners and people in the stores that still wear masks. That they're still, you know, afraid or didn't get vaccinated, which is they by all means that's that's your choice. But yeah, it's crazy. It's been three years, and we're we're almost there, my friend. We see the light at the end of the tunnel, and we just hope it's not another train coming through. Oh, God, can you imagine? We've just gone through <laughs> all this, and then we're just on the point of loud crowds. Oh, it would just be our luck. Um, but let's have a look at these two nights from the Triangle Derby, then. We are approaching the business end of the Triangle Derby with just one more show before the final. Um, But our first one is from Joetsu in um, Nagata. So from Saturday, the 11th of February, 2023, in Duo Cerezo, I believe, uh, Joetsu Nagata in front of 602 people, which was billed as being overcrowded. Now, I'll read through all the results and then we'll sort of go through the matches we'd like to talk about. So we open with a four-way tag team match. Uh, Ruwaka and Starlight Kid defeating Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa, Miyu Amasaki and Lady C and Tekla and May Sakurai with Ruwaka getting the pinfall with the freezer bomb in 10 minutes and 39 seconds. Um, match two is a six-woman tag. The Donna Del Mondo team of Micah Himika and Julia defeating the Stars team of Hazuki Kogama and Saeeda with the anchor Toshi in 10 minutes and 10 seconds. The rest of this show are then triangle derby block matches. So match three saw H&M's get their first two points of the tournament, defeating Lollipop, who stay on zero, uh, with Hannon getting the pinfall over Wacker with the backdrop driver in 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Um, match four saw Cosmic Angels move to eight points, defeating Goldship, who stay on six and have lost three in a row, with Natsupoi reversing the Kish Kasai to pin uh, Saki Kashima in nine minutes and 29 seconds. Match five, uh, which is Matt's favorite match on either card, and you'll find out why soon. Um, Aberembo God's Eye, who moved to 10, and 7-Up, who moved to 9, end in a time limit draw in 15 minutes. And then finally, the main event. So the Queen's Quest team of Utami, Sayaka Matani, and Azumi moved to 9 points, defeating Rebel and Enemy, uh, who remain on 6 points, with Azumi getting the pinfall over Ram with the Azumi Sushi in 13 minutes and 41 seconds. Uh, Matt, what matches sir. would you like to talk about, good sir? Real quick, the opening match. Um, I'm I'm all I'm all for Mina and Mariah May for tag league next year. It looks like Mariah May is staying and starting quite a bit. I thought they worked great as a team, mm-hmm. and to me, the highlight of this match was the Mina Shirakawa versus Starlight Kid exchange. I know they were in the same block for the five star, and I'm gonna have to go back and watch it because there were so many good matches in the five star that I don't remember their match, but I'm sure it was great. But I I was blown away just by the chemistry that Mina and Starlight Kid. But I don't know why I'd be blown away, because Mina's really good. Starlight Kid's one of the best wrestlers in the world. So uh, I thought that was really good, and I'm just curious to see what your star rating was on this one, because I gave it uh, three and a half stars. And also, kudos to stardom. It was May Sakurai's third anniversary match, and they put up a nice little graphic for her. I thought, I thought that's uh, that's cool, how they gave, uh, gave uh, some roses to May Sakurai here. Yeah, it was a little nice touch, wasn't it, really? And obviously, we've, we've gathered over the last couple of months that obviously Stardom are quite high on May Sakurai. But, you know, again, a really nice touch and shows that they care. Um, just to piggyback on your point from uh, the Mariah May and Mina Shirakawa, I think they are finding a lot of chemistry now, which is really, really good and really exciting. Um, I do expect Mariah May to have a decent run in the Cinderella, to be perfectly honest. I don't think she wins it, and I don't think she gets through to the semis, but I do think she has a decent run. Starlight Kid, you could, you know, 
what was the old adage we had when we first started this uh, first joined the podcast together I might think uh, uh, go, a goat it was a goat a dolphin and a broom or yeah like absolutely that. she could wrestle a sheep to a five star match um <laughs> there's very few people that can have a bad match or a bad exchange with star like her especially in the red hot form she's in at the moment um i gave it three and a quarter for an opening match that had no bearing on the triangle derby i thought this was a really really entertaining match matt yeah uh match two it's gonna be really the one thing with uh Himika doing this farewell tour. I'm going to kind of be sitting up on my couch just a little bit extra during her matches just because you're only going to get to see her a handful of times. So I guess that's, you know, we're going to put, a, you know, I put a positive spin on anything. So that's going to be one of the few positives that come out of her retirement is I'm going to be watching her final matches extra closely. Uh, I don't like to correct you, sir. I, I don't. But uh, you said that Micah won this match with the Ankatoshi. She actually won it with that fancy new finisher that she debuted on her World of Stardom Championship match against Sherry, which is now called the Micah Buster. I've written Micah Buster. Why have I put the Ankatoshi down? Yeah. <laughs> it was the Micah Buster. I don't know why I've I said was... Ankatoshi. <laughs> <laughs> because I wrote that she won with the match. And I'm like, okay, they're going to give us the graphics so we know what to call it. I'm like, Micah Buster is great. It reminds me of like a Mega Man thing, you know, the Mega yeah. Buster. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I've said Anchor Itoshi because I have got written down Micah Buster. Um, and we can pronounce it. We can pr- it took me six months to pronounce Anchor Itoshi. <laughs> Micah Buster is easy. I know that one. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was, it was another good match. Again, Julia Hazuki, that's always fun. You obviously had all the, uh, the shenanigans with the whole Guma dance and uh, Julia and Hazuki being stoic None and refusing it. to sell it. It was, it's entertaining. It's a nice little comedy match um, that had some really stiff exchanges sprinkled in, which is what you sort of expect from these two teams. Um, yeah, and we get a, a preview of Julia and Hazuki, and that's got to be a match for Red Bell. I like how everybody was comedy, and then Julia and Hazuki were like, all right, enough of this. Let's just get into kicking each other in the face for real. It's like, oh, you know we're going to get it. You know we're going to get it, Julia. I say it all, every week on this podcast. Hazuki pin Julia at the uh, the main event of night one of the five star. They got to go there, right? They, I mean, that's just, that's, just, that's just printing money and printing more money, that match. It would surprise me if they didn't run... Hazuki versus Julia, maybe at that uh, Fukuoka show in May. Um, my birthday's in, my birthday's in May, so that'd be a great birthday. <laughs> well, I'm sure they've got that in mind, Matt. Um... <laughs> yeah, that's, they're thinking of me. That's why they held it off. It's like, no, no, no. Matt's birthday's in May. He's going to be up at two o'clock in the morning with kazoo's and party hats and waking up the entire household. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with Hazuki coming from Fukuoka. It's all to do with Matt's birthday. <laughs> A selfish jerk I am. Uh, what did you? What, what did you give this last match? Hold on, let me before. I hope everybody's staying with us. All right, what did you give this match? Star uh, I, gave, I gave it three and a quarter again. Oh. I was three and a half. I was three and a half. Uh, the next two matches, I'm just wondering about your star rating. The H uh, and M versus Lollipop. I had it at three and a half. Uh, I gave it three and a quarter. I actually, I think this is one of Lollipop's best showings um, during this tournament. Um, I did enjoy Mayu being too scared of Rina Amakura's noise and literally running away. Um, but has she gotten louder? Because I think Amakura might be threatening Nene at the top of the decibel charts. Like one of the one of the other reasons why I kind of was not didn't I'm not gonna say dislike we'll get to it the uh, seven up versus God's Eye match I was like oh boy I yeah from this thing on mute yeah Nene was on a different level in that match good Christ <laughs> um but in in all seriousness I quite enjoyed this match like I said I thought Waka looked great and uh, I thought Momo Kogo again impressed um so the ongoing um improvement in momo kogo is evident um in terms of the cosmic angels and gold ship match um it was snappy it was the shortest match on the card um and i gave it again three and a quarter I, oh no did i give it three and a half I gave it three and a half i apologize um Ooh, we flipped we flipped i gave that one three and a quarter because i have the too short is my biggest complaint oh god yeah i agree i, I would have loved to have seen this go a little bit further but i thought Natsu Katora breaking up a bridging pin with a senton just looked incredible. Um, poor Natsupoy. Um, it was nice for Natsupoy actually to get a pinfall. Um, 
as she has been yeah. the person who's eaten every pinfall in, in this tournament for Cosmic Angels. Um, so it was nice for her to get the pinfall. Um, let's move on to that semi-main then. So Aberembo, God's Eye, and 7-Up. Um, before I let Matt go on what I'm sure will be a very, very polite rant, um, yeah, n- I, the noise from Nene, like she seems to fluctuate between being just loud and then being unbearable to listen to. And this was so unnecessarily loud. It was every time she moved, it was like she was stepping on hot coals. Um, Like, the match itself, I really enjoyed. I enjoyed Suri and Nene's exchanges, really enjoyed that. I thought you and Mariah's stuff was really good, and it wouldn't surprise me if we get a Suri and Mariah challenge for the tag uh, tag belt soon. It really wouldn't. They see they there seemed to be something left on the table in this match, um, especially as this has a very real possibility now as being one of the semi-finals on the fourth of March. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Um, Matt, noise from Nene aside, go on. So um, yeah, not only Nene, but yet Sherry in there as well. Again, two of my favorite wrestlers, but the yelling and screaming. Literally, my wife was making uh, dinner, and she thought the cats were fighting. I'm not even joking. She goes, <laughs> that the cats or the TV? I was like, no, it's the TV. She's like, is it? Sh-? She goes, is it Sherry or is it Nene? <laughs> Nene. And I go, it's both. She goes, oh gosh, she goes, you turn that down. <laughs> she knew. She knew. She said, which one is it? It's both of them. Oh my gosh, I thought the cats were fighting. I thought the match was great, um, except for, and I know me and you talked about this yesterday, is the one thing that I don't like about you. I think she is, not you, Rob Goo. You me. know, I absolutely <laughs> love you. Nah, I love you. I love all of our listeners. I love you. Uh, <laughs> is it, She's so good in the ring. And I mentioned this before during the, the, the tag derby um, or the tag league, the guy starting tag league is her lack of selling takes me out of the match. Now, when she her lack of selling against Miyu Amasaki, I under, I, I, I defended her. Miyu was throwing forearms that wouldn't break an egg. But uh, her lack of selling, and I don't know if it's just with Mirai and Amisori, but if you go back and watch their God's Time tag match against Mirai Amisori, the new era, she sells next to nothing. Next to nothing. So Amisori is one of the biggest, strongest competitors in all of stardom. And one of her big offense is the Kenta Kabashi machine gun style chops. And you got to keep in mind, Ami Sori is a champion for this company. So it's like she's somebody that's very well representative, represented in the company. And she's throwing these chops and she's just laughing at it. And she did it twice. And then Mariah's throwing clotheslines and she's not selling anything. I think somebody even brought it out to me, pointed out to me, she goes, well, Mariah is her, uh, her student. Maybe that's why. And I'm like, not for nothing, but like I've been very fortunate to train with some of the best wrestlers, past, present, and future. And anytime I was ever in the ring with them, whether it be in a match or training or anything, they would go out of their way to make me look good because you're their trainer. You're, you know, they're a reflection on you. So if you're not selling to make them look bad, you're their person that's responsible for them. So what does that say about you? So, uh, and I don't mean you, I mean you as the person and you as the wrestler. But her I literally halfway through the match, I just stopped watching. Because anytime she was in the ring, I was playing on my phone. I was playing the cats. I was seeing what Lily was doing. Because I was just, and the sad part is, you was a phenomenal wrestler. Especially, you know, when she's doing these tags with uh, Nene. I, I think the 7-Up team is great. But it's just her lack of selling. The only time that I look back at the TV was when, uh, when she was in the ring is when Mariah had her in the double wrist lock. And then she grapevined the head with the legs. And I was like, oh boy. And it looked like Mariah was getting, I don't know if this was a work or a shoot or whatever. You see she was getting pissed because she was really, really uh, laying in the, uh, the, the double. She had the dust, double wrist lock in pretty well. And if you know how to work that hold, you can pop somebody's arm real fast, real quick. And obviously it's a work. You're not going to want to hurt anybody. At the same time, if you're not selling my stuff and you're making me and this match look bad, like I need to let you know, like, hey, like that's not cool. So when it goes to the time limit draw, same thing that happened here happened to tag match. You just gets up, doesn't sell anything, gets in Mariah's face. So like Mariah had a good majority of the finish with the double wrist lock, which is one of her finishers. You know, the mirror Mariah double wrist lock. We've seen her tap out several people to it. So when she gets up and just doesn't sell and then slaps Mariah in the face, it looks like they're going to go at it. And Mariah doesn't back down until Sherry gets into the ring. And I thought whether that was a worker or a shooter, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting concept because it's like, okay, like I, if it came down to Mariah and you in a shoot, 
I don't know how that would go, but if it came down to Sherry and you in a shoot, I'm pretty sure how I would know that would go. But like Mariah didn't back, or you didn't back down at all until once Sherry got in the ring and Sherry looked even annoyed and pissed too. Whether it's a worker shoot, I don't know, but I don't like the lack of selling, especially when people who are very prominent and pushing the company, Mariah and Ami Sori, are giving you moves that that look like they're devastating and you're just not giving giving a damn. Uh, I I've had this at four stars. I actually dropped it a half a star because of you's lack of selling. I had it three and a half stars. And again, it was a good match. She had a solid effort. Uh, Yuna was really good. And A was really good. Of course, Mariah, Siri, and Ami Sori were really good. I like your uh, idea and concept. Mariah and Sherry challenging for the Goss of Stardom Championships. Yes, please. Um, but uh, yeah, I, that was... And I thought that when uh, once they wrestled Meltier and they beat them for the tag belts, the fact that she was selling so good for Natsupoy and selling so good for Tam that it's like maybe said somebody said something in the back like, hey, you know, you need to pick up your selling to get these these uh, other wrestlers over to help the match out. And then when I saw just the lack of selling on here, I'm like, nope, she's she's back on it. She's back on. It. And again, maybe it's just something she has with Ami and, and, and Mariah. I don't know, but uh, yet yeah, it takes me out of the match. I do see what you mean. I mean, I I gave it four stars. Um, I I did enjoy it, I, but I do see what you mean, especially with that mirror mare at the end, um, because Mariah had it locked in for ages. She had the head, yeah. She had the head scissors on there too. That's what I was trying to say. She had. I thought it was really cool how she had the double wrist lock and the head scissors on as well. And she really like she was she was squeezing on the head there. I'm like, good for you, Mariah. But. Obviously, you is writhing about in pain as you would in that move, and then just get straight up as soon as the bell rings. As soon as Mariah lets go of the hold, you get straight up. But she sort of holds the arm, but is then kicking out at Mariah, and just it didn't look as impactful as it possibly could have done, which is a little bit of a shame. But maybe if this does, to, if this is one of the semi-finals, which at the moment the way the blocks are looking and looking at the last night of block action at Corican, um, it's looking like this it's got a very real possibility of being a semi-final um, we'll see if they, if this escalates because my first impression, because obviously you got the confrontation between Suri and Nene on the outside as well, where they were literally slapping each other's faces um, I was getting the impression that they were just building something in terms of a match further down the line as opposed to anything being shoot, but again, we'll uh, we'll wait and see and then, of course, we had the main event, the Queen's Quest team versus Rebel and Enemy. Um, uh, we'll talk about, obviously, what happens post-match. But in terms of the exchanges between the two teams, I thought it was one of the best I've seen from Rebel Enemy. Um, and Queen's Quest were Queen's Quest. So, obviously, I quite enjoyed this match, Matt. Rob, I'm going to shock you, buddy. I'm going to shock you, I'm about to say. I thought... Uh... Maya Yaguki was fantastic. I thought the rest of Rebel Enemy was fantastic. And a hot take. This, this you can put this on the banner when you post this podcast tomorrow morning. Okay. Because Matt re Matt really, really enjoyed Queen's Quest here. Really wow. enjoyed hot take, buddy. Hot take. Look out. <laughs> yeah, this this match was fantastic. I thought uh I, I I rant and rave on this podcast ever since I first seen uh Maya Yaguki wrestle. I think she's fantastic. She's great presence. She's great in these uh, multi-person, are they, in the triangle derby matches. She does a good job feeding in for, you know, Ram and uh, Ozaki's uh, double teams and triple teams. I thought she had a great exchange with all three, Saya Kamatani, Azumi, and Yutami. And who would have thought that uh, Saya, Azumi, and Yutami would have good exchanges with, with anybody? You know, another shocker. But I thought her stuff with Azumi was really good. There was, like, high-speed violence there. Mm. Uh, so I was like, ooh, maybe we get it. I mean, that, that'd be nice if we get a high-speed match between the two of them. Um, and then obviously her stuff with Saya Kamatani was great as well. And I thought that was kind of the heart of the match, but this was, you know, you said it and probably one of the best Queens quest matches in this derby, my favorite rebel enemy uh, match uh, in this tournament. I thought it was really good. I thought uh, the Queens quest, I love how they build these big matches, especially, you know, it's the main event. They're trying to get points. They're trying to get to the finals. And whenever like one of them is in trouble, like whether it's Azumi or Sai, Utami, the other two come in for the save. And they come in with like double teams and then they build to like the triple team moves, like where they do the, uh, the magic killer into the double stomp. Really uh, enjoy that. Uh, and Utami and Azumi worked really, really well together as a team here. And considering the fact that the heart of the team really is the Aphrodite team, you know, former goddess of stardom champions with Saya and, uh, Utami. But, um, I liked how as they're building towards the finish with Ram and Azumi, Ram goes for the, uh, the slice bread. 
Azumi is able to get out, but as soon as uh, Ram lands, Utami just comes right behind her and just clotheslines it right in the back of the neck. I was like, <laughs> oh boy, I hope we're taking it home here. Uh, and eventually, uh, Azumi hits the Azumi Sushi on the Ram for the for the win. I thought it was great given the way they built the finish and the way that Utami's like, I got you, Azumi. You don't worry about a thing. You just struggle off there and I'll take this girl's head off and then you do one of your fancy roll-ups there, kid. I got it. Uh, four and a quarter stars. This was my favorite match. I didn't uh, see all of uh, the show from the 12th because it the last three matches just got posted a few hours ago. But out of the uh, nine matches that I watched, this was my favorite. Yeah, I gave it three and three quarters. Um, I put that really, like you already mentioned, the uh, the the little high speed sequence we got we got between Azumi and uh, Mai Yukihi. Um, but I enjoyed the Azumi and Ram stuff. I thought they played really, really well off each other. I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Ram go for that high speed championship. And I also thought the Utami versus Ozaki was a very brief but really, really cool sort of high high intensity sort of lariat exchange and the big move, the the big power moves. It was a power exchange. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, and I did really enjoy that because I do think that in terms of this team, especially in this tournament, um, Ozaki gets overlooked a little bit because, you know, Ram is, her look is very iconic. And then uh, Maya Yukihi is sort of, who stardom are focused on at the moment. So it was nice to see Ozaki get uh, a little bit of a run in here. Also, at the start of the match, she was doing these jumps and literally touching her toes to the top of the turnbuckle. And I was like, it never ceases to amaze me how flexible people are because just I am so inflexible. Like the noises I get, the noises I make when I bend over, like for a pencil or something, is just, it's unreal. It's like a yak mating. Um, but yeah, I thought that was Yikes. Really <laughs> Folks, if you, if you had yak mating on your stardom caps bingo card <laughs> for today, please let me know. You're, you're probably like the free space, it, but like the free space in the stardom cats bingo card is Matt's going to put over Queen's Quest. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yak mating. Okay. I have bingo. <laughs> um, obviously the big thing to come out of this was Julia coming to ringside after the match and addressing Maya Yukihi and saying, why did you come to stardom? How about my red belt? Challenge me for it. So it looks like we are going to be getting a Julia and Yukihi fight for the red belt, which I'm very, very excited for. It's going to be a really good match. I'll be interested to see when they do it, um, whether that will be maybe New Blood Premium or... Maybe even the ta the uh, Triangle Derby final. I can't really see it being the Triangle Derby final, but it might be. Um, sorry, my cat's just come in. He's very excited about the premise of uh, Julia and Yuki here as well. Um, I'll I'll be interested to see when they do it. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic match. Um, irrelevant of when they do it, I, I, they might do it at Fukuoka. But um, I've got my heart set now. Now that I've mentioned it, I've got my heart set on it being Hazuki. Um, I mean, she's not going to win it there, but it will be nice for her to do it in front of her home crowd. Um, what about you, Matt? I mean, this was this was you. This was your prediction. And uh, on Twitter, like you said, a broken clock is right twice a week or twice a day, even not twice a week. That's not the saying. Um, you know, well done. Excellent prediction. I kind of, maybe just some, I kind of willed in, I, I willed into uh, the uh, the universe there just because it was the main event of the first Triangle Derby match. I'm like, oh, there's no way Julia's team, who she just won the red belt, is going to go under against a team that's not from stardom. And then when uh, Mai won, I was like, okay, they clearly have plans for her. You know, that's, I think that's a good match just to rack up Julia some successful tile defenses. Not only successful tile defenses, but tile defenses, they're going to gonna get the belt over, get Julia over, and get her opponent over. Um, so, and it's going to, you know, draw money and draw interest. So I think that's probably new blood premium. Cause I believe they're running, Yo um, Yokama Budokan, I think for that. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think that, yeah. And that's kind of what, like a 3000 seat arena. So Something I think, that, yeah. yeah. So I think they're going to need a red belt match. And, uh, since it's, you know, kind of has the new blood logo, uh, my Yuguki is basically a, a new blood, you know, new for the stardom fans. She is kind of fits that new blood mold. And, uh, I think that's a good, and, and it is premium. So it's not just New Blood, it's New Blood Premium as well. So uh, I think that would be a good place for That's where my guess is going to be. So maybe I go 2-0 and on these uh, Julia versus Mayu, Mayu uh, <laughs> uh, championship uh, predictions. Uh, if not, one, if not, I'll be one for one. So, hey, you know, one in a row. So, 
I mean, to be fair, it it makes sense because, again, I mentioned this when uh, they announced that they were going to be running the Yokohama Budokan for New Blood Premium, that they need they need something apart from just the New Blood brand because I don't feel like the New Blood brand, pardon me, irrelevant of what wrestlers you put on there, Starlight Kid or something like that, I don't feel like they've quite got enough to do a decent number of the Yokohama Budokan. You put a red belt title defense there, you know, as good as Mayuki has been, she's she's not taking the red belt off Julia, but they'll put on an excellent match and that will draw tickets. So a red belt tile defense is going to draw tickets. So I think that that's a really good idea to put that on at that um, at the Enable Premium show and start and uh, sort of accelerate ticket sales there. Because I don't know how well the ticket sales are selling, actually. I need to, uh, I need to check that out. Um, let's move on then to the second night. Now, this is good because I haven't seen the non-triangle derby matches. Um so I've only seen the triangle derby matches. So we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to tag each other in there, Matt. Um this is obviously from uh, Fuji, uh, the Fuji San Mess in Shizuoka from Sunday the 12th of February 2023 in front of 647 people, which is again billed as overcrowding and a sellout. Um, I'll run through the results and then my view talk us through some of the points from the first four matches and then I'll talk about the uh, triangle derby matches. Um, match one, two on three handicap tag match uh, with the Cosmic Angels team of Natsupoi Mina Shirakawa and Mariah May defeating the Stars team of Hannah and Kogama in eight minutes and 22 seconds. Uh, match two was a three-way wa- three way match with Saya Kamatani, Tam Nakano and Yuna Mizumori ending in a time limit draw at 15 minutes. Uh, match three, six woman tag team match, the Oweta tag team of Natsuka Tora, Saki Kashima, and Momo Watanabe, defeating the stars team of Mayu Iwatani, Sayurida, and Hazuki with the trifecta in 10 minutes and 10 seconds. Match four, six woman tag team match, the God's Eye team of Suri, Mirai, and Amisori, defeating the Queen's Quest team of Utami, Hayashishita, Azumi, Miyu Amasaki, uh, Mirai tapping out Miyu Amasaki with the Mirror Mare in 14 minutes. And then our two triangle block match, triangle derby block matches, sorry, uh, for the night. So Unique Glare moved to six points, defeating Lollipop with Ruwaka pinning Waka with the Freezer Bomb in 12 minutes and 36 seconds. And then in our main event, the Barry Barry Bombers moved to six points, defeating My Himmy with C, uh, who remain on four points, with Julia pinning Lady C with the Glorious Driver in 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Uh, Matt, over to you. Yes, so I did not watch match number four, um, the Mariah Amisori, Sherry versus Miyu, Yutami, Nazumi. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, did you say Mariah tapped out Miyu with the double wrist lock? I believe so, yes. Interesting, since it was uh, sold so poorly the night before. Anywho. <laughs> um, that's so, uh, that's so unlike <laughs> so, you. That was so uh, passive-aggressive. Uh, <laughs> no, that, all I'm doing is putting over Mariah in the double wrist lock, buddy. That's it, which I will be in several double wrist locks at Catch Wrestling Camp this weekend. So that's that's why I will be tapping out at least 12 <laughs> times to the double wrist lock as I go to Snake Pit USA this weekend. Anywho. Um, it's great that two back-to-back sellouts, considering the fact that the, the numbers have kind of been not, I'm not going to say, uh, they've been really good, but nowhere near as where they were towards the end of the year. So that's great that stardom is, uh, they're kind of back on the train of getting these sellouts. Um, the first match, I was a little confused why it was a handicap match, but I was like, okay. Um, again, Mina and Mariah May worked really, really well together. Uh, Koguma got her fancy stuff in. There were some great exchanges with Hana and Natsupoi here. That again, obviously, not to play great, and I think she's just so criminally underrated just because how, how how stacked the stardom roster is, especially in the white belt and red belt divisions. That we just sometimes tend to take not to play for granted, like, yeah, she's so darn good. And Han, and geez, I mean, oh, she's just uh, she's just a star in the making, she really, really is. And uh, it was interesting with the finish of this was uh, Mina's running Inseguri, which is not it's called the Glamorous Sword. Which one, it's cool looking move. Two, she's beating people with it. And three, it's a name, Rob, that we can pronounce very much like the <laughs> Micah Buster. Look, glamorous sword, sweet, I got it. No problem. Done. <laughs> I don't need the six months to repronounce pronounce it or like talk to ten different people and be like, how do I pronounce this? Um, but I thought that was I thought it was a uh, it was a really good match with a really cool finish. And the fact that Mina is now starting to get over this glamorous sword as a finish. It's something else that she has in her arsenal. Uh three and a half stars. Uh, the three-way with Yuna, Sai Kamatani, and Tam 
this is you have Sai and Tam in here who have had two phenomenal uh a wonder of stardom championship matches uh obviously Sai won the belt last year at dream queendom and then their rematch just about a year ago on night one of um excuse me night two of a uh, world climax where Tam was uh, desperate to almost to break her neck because she wanted to take uh, her Quran off the top rope through the floor and then decided that she watched a whole bunch of new Jack matches before and did that crazy dive. So it was like, it was cool to see them, you know, obviously you're not going to get Tam jumping off any buildings here, but I thought they had some really good exchanges. It turned into a comedy match with Yuna trying to give Tam a Valentine's day gift. And Tam, after she like just kicked Yuna three times in the head, like just stopped and she, oh, thank you so much. And then of course, you know, she got slurved. But uh, I thought the match was really, really good. And again, I think Yuna played her role really well here. They threw some comedy stuff in here. And again, it's Saya versus Tam. Of course, it's going to be good. Uh, three and a half stars. Don't know why that one went to a time limit draw though. I think they could have given Tam a, a win over Yuna here, but that's just me. Um, the next match would be Mayu Saida Hazuki versus uh, Tora Saki and Momo Watanabe. Is, is it your standard away to tie match where they jump the uh, the baby faces to start? You get a brawl. Um, there wasn't enough. I thought with this match, we get some Hazuki versus Momo, and we get some Momo versus Mayu, and we got some stuff. The Hazuki Momo stuff was, I just don't know if they're either really, really good friends or they really, really hate each other because the stuff we got was brief. <laughs> but at the same time, if you have like a heavyweight fight with two fighters that have, have, uh, knockout power and like um, punch one or two you know it's not going to go long it doesn't need to go long because yeah these two just beat the crap out of each other for the little bit we got in the ring i'm a big fan of the trifecta i think that's a really cool uh finisher and it's cool that saki kashima is the one that finishes it so giving her the nod and the win on the uh the trifecta i thought was really good uh there were some really good exchanges with the uh, saida and uh, and saki kashima they kind of get lost in the shuffle with those you know with the with the with the teams with tora kind of being you know coming back she was basically handed the leadership from uh, when uh, Kigetsu retired. And then Momo Watanabe is Momo Watanabe and Hazuki Mayu. They're both excellent. So Saida and kind of Saki kind of, uh, you would think get lost in the shuffle with just how good the other four are around them. But they really stood out uh, in this match to me. I thought they were the uh, the main focal points in this match. Uh, three and a quarter stars. So I thought the match was really, really good. And like I said, match four, I did not see. Of course, I, you know, it's got Queen's Quest in it. It's got Shiri in it, Mirai, Ami, sorry. And uh, Miyu Yamasaki, who I'm sure took several lariats in this match. So I will definitely be watching that match sometime this weekend. So over to you, sir, for the final few matches. I'm going to, as usual, in my tag team with Andy Hatter, I took a whole bunch of heat. I'm going to tag you in for the cool stuff, sir. <laughs> um, yeah, Uni Glare versus uh, Lollipop was a lot more entertaining than uh, I thought he had any right to be, to be perfectly honest. Uni Glare eliminated Lollipop, or obviously stone dead last in the block with zero points. But even though we know Wakasuki Armour is not going to win, those near falls she gets, there was one in particular on Ruwaka where I could not physically believe that it had not been three. It's one of the, sh- the closest two counts I've ever seen. Um, but I thought Waka put on a fantastic, fantastic uh, performance. I thought Yuko Sakurai actually looked really, really good here. Pardon me, we rag quite a lot on Harukaru Masaki for a terrible side hustle as Karma, but I thought, again, she seems to be really blending in well, working really well with a specialist Starlight Kid, and I thought Ruwaka looked like she'd really upped her game for this match. There was a real, real connection between her and Wakasuki Armour, and uh, again, I talked about how um, Lollipop's, their match with um, H&M's, on the previous night was perhaps one of their best showings. I think this was their best showing. I gave it three and a half stars. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed the fact that uh, Oedetai stole the lollipops at the end of the match. I cannot believe more heel teams did not do that to lollipop throughout the course of the tournament. Um, and then, of course, we had Barry Barry Bombers versus uh, My Himmy with C, which... It was a real love fest for just everything we love about DDM. You've got the hard-hitting lariats um, from Micah and Himika. You've got Julia kicking everything that moved. May Sakurai took an absolute pummeling. Um, and Lady C ended up being dropped ne- damn nearly on her head with this glorious driver. But in my opinion, this should have gone longer. I just wanted more of it. 
Um, just because you got that spot where everyone hits their finish and then everyone's out. And uh, it was just fun to see so many people getting laid out with lariats and things like that. It was a fun match. Um, and again, I gave it three and a half stars. Really entertaining. It's These two matches actually were up there with the best uh, triangle derby matches of the two nights. So uh, go out of your way to go and see them. But post-match, um, after the show, Donna Del Mondo tried to convince Lady C to become Lady D and join DDM. Just before I carry on with that, I just want to quickly point out that Lady D means something very, very, very different. And if she does go to DDM, she really needs to consider that name before she changes it. Um, she said she wants to be a second for Himika until she retires. Um, as for the whole joining DDM, she said she couldn't make a decision now, so they told her goodbye. Um, we <laughs> Last week, I think we got a question... Um, in regards to Lady C and joining DDM. And of course, <laughs> at the time, it was very much a case of, nah, I can't see her leaving Queen's Quest. If Lady C is the one to replace Himika in DDM, what would your opinion be of that, Matt? I've had a lot of people ask me the questions because if a year ago, look, DDM was Sherry, Julia, Natsupoy, Micah, Himika, May Sakurai, Tekla, Mirai. I think I got all of them. <laughs> now we're, you know, now we're down to Micah. I mean, Himika is pretty much retired. We're down to Julia, Micah, Tekla, May Sakurai. So it's like they need new members. A lot of people think it's going to be Lady C making the jump. I think that she's in a win-win situation. I really like the way she fits in with as pretty much the fourth biggest member of Queen's Quest. And that's all due respect to her. It gets you Tommy Izumi, Sai Kamatani, and you can shuffle that one, two, and three how you want. But I think she fits in well, you know, with the robe, the charisma, just the badassery on the entrance. I think she kind of, because she's so tall, she kind of, especially when she's carrying the Queen's Quest flag, she yeah. separates herself a little bit. So I think she works well there. I wouldn't be heartbroken if she goes to DDM. I think that she'd be a good fit there. But kind of just watching these shows and looking at the roster, I have two other members that I think would fit in uh, just as well, if not better. And I'm going to throw them at, at you, sir, and then you lobby back up. I think a great person to jump ship and to go DDM would be Saida. We both love Saida. She's so good. She's lost in the shuffle with stars. And that's nobody's Mayu's Mayu. Hazuki's great. Koguma's fantastic. We all praise Hanan. Um, she's almost like lost in the shuffle. Again, I talked about how in the six-person match that they had uh, just on Sunday, um, she's lost in the shuffle because of all the you know quote-unquote stars, pun intended, around her. I think she would stand out so well being you know in that group with Julian Micah. So I think I would love to see Saida get a you know a fresh coat of paint and join i think she'd be great in ddm and the other person that i think would be fantastic in donald del mundo would be and you're gonna call me crazy suzu suzuki <laughs> okay um i don't hate I that, idea. that i think that you kind of bury the hatchet with julia suzu's not going to be winning the red belt but she can be somebody that challenges for the white belt i'll be honest i mean if you are able to tie Suzu Suzuki down to a contract, and in in the in the spirit of honesty, I don't see that happening. Uh, Suzu Suzuki is very happy doing her prominent stuff and sort of coming in coming into stardom for a shot and then leaving again. If by some miracle Suzu Suzuki is tied down to an exclusive contract with stardom, which you know she's one of the hottest things in Joshi wrestling. I feel like everyone should be trying to sign Suzu Suzuki. Um, I think DDM's a good fit for her. I think you can sort of tell that story of settling the differences between her and Julia. And I think if she is signed to an exclusive contract, there is no reason she can't win the red belt. Um, as an outsider or someone who's not on the full-time roster, I think the white belt is a good a good sort of area for Suzu. Um, you can sort of half believe that she might win a white belt match, but I don't know. Sayreed is an interesting one. Sayreed could, I mean, she is, she's the pin oh, eater. Good. She's the pin eater she's, in stars. But she's, but she's so good. Look what May Sakurai has done since she's, uh, 
swapped over and she's what about a year i think it was about a year ago since she swapped over and and i know it kills you to say because i know how much you love her that you know the insane how oh, uh, Kyrie stole her finisher the insane elbow but uh <laughs> she's i mean there's no you can't deny she's improved so much and she's only going to get better and i think it's just because you know she was kind of lost in the shuffle they were cosmic angels and that's what saeed is she's fantastic in their ring She's so good. Everything she does, you know, the gorilla stuff, the shoulder tackles, the chops, she'll get dropped on her head. She'll get kicked in the face. She'll bring it back to you. And then ultimately, yeah, she does eat the pin. I think that uh, I would love to see her in DDM. I think that's a really good fit. That injury came into really bad. T- I mean, injuries never come at a good time, do they? But that injury in particular for Sai Rita, I felt like she was really riding a wave of momentum. And then it was all scuppered with that massive injury. She ended up not being part of the five stars. She had to drop the belt. She's been overtaken in stars by the likes of Hannon. If you've got Sayurida and Hannon in a match, you know that if stars are losing, Sayurida is taking the pin, not Hannon. Um, and it's sort of between her and Momo Kogo. And the fact that she's on the level of Momo Kogo and isn't higher up, it does make you wonder, like, is her future somewhere else? That's a, that's a really interesting one. I can see the Sai Rida one more than the Suzu Suzuki one, which I'm sure you probably anticipated anyway. Um, but yeah, that's re- we'll have to keep an eye out on uh, on Sai Rida's movements and, of course, on Donna Del Mondo's as uh, we near him at his imminent retirement. Um, in terms of the blocks then, so we have got one more show of the Triangle Derby, and that will be coming from Corican Hall on Friday the 17th. So as you are listening to this, maybe, um, or when this episode drops, that show will be taking place. So let me just run through the blocks. So we'll start with Red Block, where with one match for everyone left, everyone is on six matches, um, there are only three teams that are able to qualify for the semifinals in Red Block. Those three teams are seven up, who are four, one, and one on nine points. Uh, Queen's Quest, who are also four, one, and one on nine points. And Cosmic Angels, who are four and two on eight points. Uh, eliminated are Club Venus, of course, who are the only team to have completed all their matches with Zion Brookside uh, having to leave. Uh, Unique Glare on three and three with six. Barry Barry Bombers on three and three with six. And H&M's who are on one and five uh, on two points. So in red block, it is a straight shootout between those three teams. In blue block, things are a little bit more interesting. Um, Aberembo, God's Eye are already into the semifinals. Um, they are 4-0-2 oh, on 10 points. Um, prominence are second with four and two on eight points. Gold ship three and three on six points. Rebel and enemy just about still in the running three and three, six points. And then eliminated are my Himmy with C two and five on four points. Same with classmates. And then lollipop again, rock bottom of the group zero and six with zero points. Now in terms of who can qualify again, First and second from each block go through. So red block first place will take on blue block second place and vice versa for the other match. Corrick and Hall, these are the matchups. So you've got Queen's Quest versus Classmates. Aberembo God's Eye versus Cosmic Angels. Unique Glare versus Gold Ship. 7-Up versus Lollipop. H&M's versus Rebel and Enemy, and Barry Barry Bombers versus Prominence. Uh, You've also got a four-way tag team match, which we'll go through in a minute, and you've got the introduction to the new trainees um, as well, which we talked about last week. Um, It's also worth noting as well that this Corican show is a cheering crowd. Um, So, Matt, the three teams that can go through in red block, 7-Up. 7-Up have got Lollipop. Lollipop haven't won a match. I think we can sort of assume that 7-Up are winning that. So uh, with that, 7-Up will be on 11 points and they will have qualified. For me, it's between Queen's Quest and Cosmic Angels who gets that second place. Queen's Quest have got classmates. So Kogama, Hazuki and Sayurida on the final night. Cosmic Angels have got Aberembo, God's Eye, who haven't lost a match yet. 
who's your money on? Man. Oh man. Yeah. Seven. Um, seven up is definitely going through. I thought maybe that they, they would pull the Waka win out there, but they've already built up the new blood premium. So yeah, that's going to happen. I don't see seven up making it to the finals. I just don't. No. And of course I want to see Queens quest, make it to the finals, but that's the Azumi starlight kid. So do you have Azumi wrestle twice? I'm all for it. Same time, Cosmic Angels is a big deal. I'm lo- I talk about it all the time on the show. Um, I'm going to talk about it now. I-, I think Saki is filling in so well as the third member of Queen's Quest. I think she does such a great job, uh, basically, you know, fill- fitting in with the uh, the Meltier stuff there. It's a it's a win win for me. Obviously, I'm a giant Queen's Quest fan. Uh, so really, you know, my my yes. And obviously I'm a, I'm a giant, I'm a giant Mel Tier fan and I'm putting over Saki uh, a lot over the last three or four months. So it's going to the seven up's going to be there just to kind of have the team of like, nobody wants to see go through. And if that's no disrespect to them, again, I kind of ragged on you a lot here. I really didn't mean to, but at the same time, I think she's a great wrestler. She's phenomenal in the ring. Uh, I think that seven up team is really good. Again, they're, they're going to go through. Uh, I'm going to say, God's eye hasn't lost yet. They need to have some sort of some sort of dent in the armor going into the finals. I'm gonna say it's gonna be Cosmic Angels, but flip of a coin on that one. I'm with you, man. I think uh, I think I don't know. I see Abarembo God's eye slipping up. Um I just I they're, they're through regardless, right? Abarembo, God's Eye are definitely through. They're the only team that are through okay. currently. Um, I don't know. There's something about classmates. I just see classmates pulling something against Queen's Quest. The only thing that I could think is if somehow Lollipop, because it's third to the top on the card, on the current running order, and obviously I know that this isn't uh, this isn't set in stone, I'd love Lollipop to maybe get a time limit draw here. Ooh. Oh. To then build into the new Blood Premium show. Because now you're getting Waka even closer. Exactly. Oh. Oh, I call you the Lanny Popo. Rest in peace, the genius, all the time. And that's one of the reasons, many reasons why, gentlemen and ladies and listeners of the Stardom cast. That's genius. Um, I like your th- I like your lack I like your thinking. Well, it's a Cork and Hall show, so you know Rossi Ogawa is booking at least one time limit round. That might be the one. So we both think that it's going to be seven up and Cosmic Angels. I I just see Cosmic Angels. Something about that classmates team. I just feel like they can sneak a win, especially when you've got Cogham as flash pins. Uh, and then in blue block, obviously, obviously Aberembo God's Eye are already through. Which leaves a shootout between Prominence on eight points, Gold Ship on six points, and Rebel and Enemy on six points. Bearing in mind that Prominence are your artist of Stardom Champions, they have got Barry Barry Bombers on the final night. So you've got that Suzu, Suzuki, and Julia thing again. Um, Unique Glare have got Gold Ship. So you've sort of an Oeditai thing, which in my opinion means a Unique Glare are winning. Um, and then you've got Rebel and Enemy have got H&M's. H&M's, don't forget, bottom of red block, already eliminated, have only got one win. I can see Rebel and Enemy beating H&M's. Um, I can see... If Prominence get anything out of the Barry Barry Bombers match, they're through. Because no other team can catch them. So, they're the artists of Storm Champions. I see Prominence going through with Aberembo God's Eye. Yeah, I agree because of the artist champions, but I also see Rebel and Enemy getting a win here just to keep building up uh, Mayu Guki going towards that red belt. I wouldn't even be shocked if she pins Mayu. I think that in Cork and Hall, I think that would be a really good shot in the arm going into that uh, that red belt match that she has come, uh, coming up with Julia. But uh, yeah, I because of the artist champions, I think you need to have them at least in the final four of your first uh, Triangle Derby tournament. Which and the be- best. 
the best triangle derby tournament they've ever done. Honestly, I I <laughs> cannot think of a better Queen's a uh, better triangle derby tournament off the top of my you head. You got Queen's sure. Cross on the mind. I, you honestly, got this, is the mind. this is this is your fault. Um, <laughs> but obviously, <You're> welcome. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll we'll know the semi-finals by the next time we speak to you. Um, also on that card is a four-way tag match with my Himmy taking on Mina Shirakawa and Mariah May, uh, Lady C and Miyu Amasaki, and Fukikin Death and Rina. So it's going to be an interesting night or an interesting day at Corican Hall in front of that cheering crowd. Um, at the moment, we've got our semifinals as being um, Seven Up and Queen, Seven Up and Cosmic Angels, Aberembo God's Eye and Prominence. So, hmm, interesting. Um, especially if Queen's Quest don't make it through as they were both of our favorites to get through to the final. Um, no, but- you, had God, you had God's Eye because you and Amber were the same. You and Amber both had God's Eye over Queen's Quest in the final. And the only reason I'm not taking Queen's Quest is I just don't see them having a Zoomy wrestle twice on that that's, show. That's the thing. Well, she wouldn't be wrestling twice in that show. If they get through to the final, she'd be wrestling three times. That's right, yeah. I just I don't mm. see that happening. I'd be very, very surprised. Especially, you don't want to take the sheen off of her and Starlight Kid match. Like, that could quite easily be the main event of that show. I know it won't be. I know it'll be the Triangle Derby final. But even so, I can see that being a main event. You don't want it to then be knackered and wrestle three matches. Um, it just it takes the sheen off it. Um Obviously, we haven't talked about this yet, but finally, before we sort of put a bow on this episode, um, we've got the small matter of New Japan Pro Wrestling Battle in the Valley 2023 uh, from uh, that will be taking place on Saturday, the 18th of February. We are two days away from seeing Mercedes Monet taking on Kyrie in the San Jose Civic Center in California. Um, it's a very, very tasty looking card with Kyrie versus Mercedes Monet for the IWGP Women's Championship being confirmed as the semi main event. Um, it is being billed as a double main event, but the main event is IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match between Kazuchika Okada and Hiroshi Tanahashi. Um, uh, there's, there's no way anything else is going above that. Um, but Matt. What are we thinking? We've had a lot of talking about Mercedes Monet. Obviously, this is the first time in nine months that she has been in the ring. Um, We know how good she is. We know that she can sell with the best of them. Does she take the championship from Kyrie? This is so tough because Kyrie just won it. But at the same time, does Mercedes have a loss here? I don't think I don't think it's gonna hurt because you're gonna have this is gonna be a 50-50 match. It's gonna be a barn burner. No way this is not gonna be good. I mean, I know Mercedes Monet is down on record. She wants this to be the best women's match of all time. Um, I don't think it's going to be that good, uh, just based on, you know, some of the all Japan <laughs> women stuff and some of the EO versus Mayu stuff, and uh, you know, obviously Sherry and uh, Julie, I can go on and on and on. Um yeah, oh boy, as far as who's gonna win, uh we're gonna win. The fans are gonna win. Absolutely. Um I'm not gonna lie, I'm a huge Sasha Banks Mercedes Mercedes Monet fan. I think she's gonna win, but the fan of me wants Kyrie to win because I just want her. I'm a huge, huge fan of Kyrie. Shocker. Another shocking uh revelation <laughs> here on the Stardom cast. Boy, you're just like a you you just get out you just get all the stuff out of me, Rob. Let me tell you. Honestly. Um and not only that, I want her to have a long run. She obviously won that match, uh, won the belt with that phenomenal match with Mayu. And then the match with Tam, which for the five and a half minutes they gave him, it was great. <laughs> uh, you know, obviously I'm not going to get off. I'm not going to be any more negative than I already was on this podcast. I always feel terrible. But um, to answer your question, sir, I think it's going to be Mercedes Monet that has the win here. But I really hope Kyrie wins just because I just want her to have a really long run with the IWGP uh, Women's Championship belt. Well, as uh, my cat thrusts its bottom in my face and walks past my microphone, <laughs> you might be you might hear him purring, I don't know. He's <laughs> sitting now right by the microphone, so cheers, Fred. Um, <laughs> sure, why not, Fredo? You sit there, buddy. Um, oh, 
It's I mean, a tough one. They've booked themselves into a bit of a catch-22 here. It's an enviable position to be in because you've got Mercedes Monet, who is the hottest free agent in women's wrestling, perhaps in wrestling full stop. Um, but for her not to have had a match in nine months and then to lose, I just, I don't know. There's something about that narrative that doesn't quite work for me. Um you could argue a time limit draw, but because this is IWGP, it's 60 minutes. So I can't see them doing a 60-minute time limit draw and then going to Kazuchika Okada versus Tanahashi. Um, Double pin? I mean, maybe because I just had one of those last week. <laughs> <laughs> Dusty finish. Um, I, I, honestly, this is, this is really hard to call. Um, I think you've got less to lose if Mercedes Monet wins. Um, simply because if she's taking that belt around America and things like that, more people know Sasha than they do Kyrie. Um, again, it's six and two threes. Um, yeah, sorry. I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go out and say Mercedes Monet takes this. Um, and then we get a series of really, really good singles matches. And don't forget, Mercedes Monet is booked for that Yokohama Arena show in April. And another, she's got a New Japan show too, I think, um, at got, the first week of April. Yeah, she's got, I believe it's it's not the Sakura Genesis. It's either the Sakura Genesis show or the um, end of the New Japan Cup. So, uh, I mean, they're, they're two built-in dates for title defenses. Maybe that's what or build her be. back up, or, to or maybe Kyrie. Yeah, maybe Kyrie wins here. They build her back up. Then maybe at the Dominion show or a bigger, or maybe you know the first night of the uh, the five star. You know, maybe do that as like the main event or something. That's something they can do. Maybe it's like have Kyrie go over here, and then uh, and then you just use these shows to build Mercedes back up, and then she wins it like sometime in the summer. That's mm-hmm. that might be a better thing than just have her straight out win it. It's, it's gonna, a win-win, though. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a really interesting matchup. I mean, just just in case you are New Japan fans as well, the rest of the card, um, you've got Fred Rosser versus Kenta for the Strong Openweight Championship. Uh, you've got the Motor City Machine Guns taking on the West Coast Wreck- Wrecking Crew for the Strong Openweight Tag Titles. Um, Eddie Kingston versus Jay White, which is, you know, all sorts of my cup of tea. Uh, a filthy rules fight between Homicide and Tom Lawler. Zack Sabre Jr., uh, defenses will television tile against Clark Connors. And then, as I've already mentioned, Kazuchika Okada versus Hiroshi Tanahashi for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. Um, we'll be bringing you, obviously, our review of Kyrie and Mercedes from Battle in the Valley next week on next week's episode. We may even throw in some reviews of the rest of the card as well, because I can't see there being an Okada and Tanahashi match and me and Matt not watching it. Um We'll also be talking about the final night of block action from the Triangle Derby in Corican Hall, where we will have our semi-finals locked in, ready for the final on the 4th of March. And hopefully, depending on the upload schedule, but I am promising nothing, the show from Tokozawa <laughs> as well. Um, uh, Matt, before we sign off, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, good show. Always great talking to you. I hope everybody's enjoying uh, what we're putting out. And uh, just really just thank you to everybody. Just uh, all the new Patreon members. Welcome all the new listeners we have to the show. I know there's a lot of new people that are getting into stardom. So um, they, they, they've been telling me they've been using your, uh, the, well, the, well, I guess it is your website. You're the one that created it and works on it tirelessly. They use that as a guide. So I just want to give you your flowers and your kudos live on the air, sir. So good job. Oh, you're and welcome, good. everyone. <laughs> welcome welcome everyone <laughs> absolutely welcome to everyone um but yeah thank you very much for listening guys we really do appreciate it you can subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcasts we can't thank you enough for all the support we get if you'd like to support the podcast a five-star review and a comment 
massively, massively helps us out. It really, really does, especially on Apple Podcasts. It takes 30 seconds. It's a completely free way to help out the podcast. It helps us be exposed to more people. Um, our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the Stormcast. Matt works tirelessly on the Patreon, and I promise we will do our damnedest to try and get this Suri versus Utami match up for you by Monday. Um, uh, you can talk to us on social media at the Stardom Cast. Um, Matt mentioned it before, but the website www.thestardomcast.com. If for whatever reason you want to follow me and see my inane crap that I talk on Twitter, then it's at Real Rob Goodwin. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Matt, plug your things and then sign us off, good sir. Yes, folks, as always, thank you so much. You want to get a hold of me, any questions, comments, hit me up on the Twitter and or the Instagram, Matt Turner OF on both of those social media sites. If you want to shoot me an email, by all means, the stardomcast22 at gmail.com is the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, like I said, any questions, comments, anything you want to talk about. I'm going to see uh, Ant-Man and Quantum Mania tonight uh, as we record. So if you're going to go see it and you want to uh, talk about it, by all means, drop me a line. I do more than just talk wrestling. Believe it or not. Uh, again, thanks, thanks everybody so much for your support. It really means the world to us. Because like I always say, folks, it's just not my podcast. It's our podcast because we're all together and everybody's different. Everybody's special. 